I uh, want to give you an idea of what I'm up to. What is, what is my project? What am I doing here? And so I'm going to start with the, the last poem in my book, The Mercy of Traffic. Uh, to the interviewer, I want to tell you a story that gives you the itch in words that leave an embarrassing fleck of spit at the corner of my mouth. I want to give you a yen to track all the details. I give them up so fast you can't catch more than every other syllable. I want you to turn on your recorder, the merciless one, with the microphone that can't pick up a soft apology, a whisper of confession or regret, the one that registers only the shouts of solicitation and excuse that amplifies the blaring car alarm of self. I want you to leave exhausted, depressed, convinced that poetry is impossible and that I am impossible and conditional and that I will tell all, but I won't give up the family farm. <laughs> and then finally, what I say you may have heard before, that all I have to say is, here I am, honey. Here I am. This is a poem about what it takes to be a poet. How do you become a poet? The epigraph here is from Antonio Machado. Before you write a poem, you have to create the poet to write it. Creating a poet. How do you become a thousand voices one by one? Ooh, honey, this bra is killing me. <laughs> it spirals of black lace, a choker made of shoes in circles. Ribbon at my waist, jazz hands, can I hip hop? Is my hair a crop cap? I have a soft spot for a guitar in somebody's hands. His hat, a perfect cover for a loony bin. Oh, yes, I like the dance. A waltz or a gavotte, a stride a hardback chair. Am I a battle rabbit in a slippery boy's body? Maybe. I embrace everything underwater. Whatever's in my sight line, I plunder. All the muddy clay of Givernay, all the muted light, a snake tree, a ribbon tree, dead foliage at the river's edge. In this story, how many secrets equal how many outright lies? All of them. So this is the Ozarks. Trains, passengers on trains, Walmarts, broke unions, naked children, little falls, hog stalls, home gardens, hand quilters, wood turners, button crafters, water witchers, marine recruiters. Bread bakers, road graders, handshake contracts, land taxes, taxes, corn liquor, full taffy, kerosene, cranked ice cream, brood mares, town beer, mountain lions, woodpeckers, pecker woods, water wars, no insurance, pay less, way more, the steamroller future coming at you, dark as the inside of a mule. Love for the undead. A vampire doesn't appear in the mirror. I adore this snack for antimatter. Confuse one lover with another. Was it the swimmer with kleptomania? Was it my best friend's younger brother? A man on the land casts a flimsy shadow. Being substanceless has its virtue. For me, true love is nine parts water. Guys, I chat up at the quick stop counter. More transparent than it appears. Discount fireworks. They are out there somewhere on 71 between Mina and Fort Smith, maybe in Granis or Hatfield or DeQueen, maybe even as far north as Waldron. They lurk and hunker. <coughs> they aim their loudspeakers at the highway, blare Sousa marches and songs that praise the beauty of America, that beautiful America that calls its children to roadside shacks, to weathered board and tattered awning, to sheds and stalls with hand-lettered signs, Fireworks! Discount fireworks! <laughs> to corrugated aluminum barns with U.S. sign company billboards out front that summon the farmers and the housewives, the elders and roofers, the whole wide assembly of God, plus illegal aliens, that lure all of us to the home of discount fireworks. Out there on 71, we are assured there will be sparks and blasts and blow-ups, Offerings of flame and dust and riots of colored stars dropped across summer and winter skies. A heavenly display 
to bring us joy beyond the ordinary gawk and murmur, an occasion for every man and woman, each U.S. child, to tip back, chins up to the heaven, <laughs> and not quit looking or stop adoring their nation, their holiday, their smoke and burn. After such a show, who could keep her mouth from dropping open in wonder? Who could avoid an explosion or resist drawing nearer and nearer the flame, exclaiming, ooh, and ooh, and ah. Uh, the movie that I reference here is a 1957 movie with Sophia Loren about a golden boy on a dolphin statue. Really, it was about <laughs> Sophia's body. Uh, and, okay, this is bait. What in the name of Sophia's golden boy on a dolphin was I thinking the evening we opened each other up? Easy as a fork in a brick of tin fish, easy as picking out the dainty bones from salmon, the meat pink as Phaedra's lips, as the inside of your cheek where a stranger's tongue goes when he lays you down on the dock a hundred yards from the party, or on the carpet in a small room up your parents' hall, a man in a hurry who opens his arms with a flourish and meets your mouth, which is dry as day old sockeye, and kisses you rosy, kisses you pliant as a coho fillet. And was I thinking that the day after, driving home through a hangover fog, the color of a tin-plated can, my heart black as a dorsal fin, the smell of bait on my thigh. So, I lived in Texas for a long time, too long. And when I finally got back to the Ozarks, I had a few things to say. Homecoming. Mm. From Stetson and Scrub Oak, from Pageant and Revlon, Chiffon and over-the-top coiffures, from the Bible and the fundamentals, crew cuts, dust, the scent of Chanel and sweat. From the land where I had to lie to get along, I came home. I must have been warned before I went how a dry county grinds a girl down, even if she's <laughs> immune to art, even if she's hot. It took me years to sweep past the practical, barefaced and grateful, decades to end up where I hoped I would in yellow rocket in tick seed, in wild indigo and thistle, in downy flocks, in dog tooth violet, all of us lifting and jostling for purchase in our native farm. Things burn. Because my hair was a red cape, the street filled with bowls. Because in that world things burned, I was permeable and heat passed from me while the sun crawled into the world's basement to spend another short night. Because I was swelter, the hours filled with neon and slide. Because smoke is often present in the backwoods and hollows and wet ground turns to paste on my boots, I shelter in empty rooms and touch myself to find another knot of madness the fires, other flames. I have written a number of, and they're all through the mercy of traffic, what I call the Ozark Sonnet or the Arkansas Sonnet. The Ozark Sonnets are about the Ozarks. The Arkansas Sonnets are about the rest of Arkansas. Um, and let me explain that these sonnets are more properly Catorzans, which is a 14-line poem that does not uh, adhere to the technicalities of the sonnet since we're here in Alabama, this is just about right, about the Sabbath, an Arkansas sonnet. Polka dots go there to be reborn under a dry sky that relishes its deep knowledge of jay. And a carcass on the verge associates with vultures under a storm of kudzu vines as barn cats rise and posture according to their calendar. Polka dots go where corn knows the tribulation of becoming hominy, where scattered tinfoil attracts a murder and its crows, and mama fries the Sunday chicken, peppered, dipped in egg, and sidesteps those rumors of coon stew served with hone, 
the scraps fed to more than one kind of hound. Polka dots go where an honorific loves its Christian name, and history settles on all of us like cotton dust on a pig's feet. This is the uh, title poem of the book. Uh, the epigram is from Adrian Rich. For years, all the arguments I carried on in my head were with you. The argument. Like any fox, I survived my childhood by cunning and wit. But like any fox, I was at the mercy of traffic. I kept to the verges of a house occupied by beauty. Her hair spilled into a satin page boy. Her skirt circled perfectly round and white. And when I asked, she lay it on the floor for me to see how it was made. So much luster in that creamy shark skin gathered at the waist. Put it on, oh mommy, put it on. And she did it and whirled a blur of light. I lived those days with thick art histories that amused me for hours. Ionic, Doric, classic, naked men and women in bronze and marble. I'd never seen a real naked man, although I lay on the floor trying to peer up my stepfather's towel as he passed to the bedroom, steamy from the shower in his South Sea Island tan. He caught me once and I was shamed. Never look, my mother chided, never notice. I knew that, and yet I looked again into the dark, an undress rehearsal for future lovers who were hunters, who could do without amenities, who had a flair for sore dismissal, the skill to send even the most cunning animal back to her den. Blossom, in the south of my childhood, time passed like a platter of chicken. <laughs> Grandma made lard biscuits, fried rashers of bacon and piles of pork chops and presided over the hugging and sassing and eating and telling in pulling the sticker burrs. I looked to her for solace and solutions. She delivered injunctions and axioms and was indifferent to the one strong chin hair that grew mm -hmm. and when pulled, grew back again, unkillable as a cockroach. How and why do someone's eyebrows grow both thin and wild? In the south of my childhood, we knew our place and kept it until, like grandma, our finger strength devolved to loss of grip, and the plates and silver tumbled from our hands like petals from a blossoming branch. Okay, so this is baby cake, and this is for the holidays. Today we grab the pink baby from the conventional brioche, iced sticky as a swing seat in the backyard beyond the French doors cloying as the grass clotting up like buttermilk around us, the sweet we never eat, although we plan a fete where any one of us could be a monarch, win good luck, put on a crown, buy the king cake. The showing forth epiphany when we throw crepe paper in the trees, cover the buck tables, set the water on to boil, and don't think of the weeks to come that end with fish Fridays when we go around head heavy as back fence roses, revamping our souls. Even then, we stay clinical about the news. A dog beaten, a soldier's legs gone. Next door, a baby dies. But today, we celebrate that plastic infant, hold back the sacrifice that comes with Lent, and substitute a party for oblations, wait too fast. Today we turn from the neighborhood bedlam. Today we fail to pay attention. Today we trifle with the season. Today we waste it. Now, I have to say, we have this little town, it's 2,000 people, right? And we see a million tourists every year, come and go. And we have a love-hate relationship with these tourists. We love <laughs> them to come and spend money, but we would really like them to go home afterwards. <laughs> Don't buy our houses with your Texas and California money and drive our prices up. So, this is a little uh, Ozark sonnet that I have written that deals with that. Against moving to the mountains. <laughs> when you pass a coyote, head and tail down, 
in the sly glide of the last eater at the carcass, her slant darkness withdrawn from the verges near Jasper. Say to yourself, this is not a dog. When the signs, hitches, poopies for sale, hand lettered in Sharpie, jitter past your window. Don't interrupt your jaunt to check it out. Just chug on and mutter a charm against bad spelling. When dawn comes to ozone, lavishes a flare, <coughs> tears her stockings to tangerine scrap on a rose bush, twisted into a sorry fence. When the new sunlight heads straight towards a lone, low-hanging pine, don't let your glance catch on the acre, luscious with berries, on the roan, hind foot cocked, pasturing down, her skin rippling like a wind-blown stock pond. Celebrate the place, but don't pause to ogle the almost dog, the fly-ridden hill horse. These mountains can overrun your mind like wisteria covers a whitewashed porch. But just keep going. Move along. And I think you probably know all of the references here, except maybe Night Train. Anybody had any Night Train wine? No. It's ruinously bad, and it cost 99 cents a bottle in those days. Yeah. Good one. I wrote this poem when I was in graduate school in Vermont to explain to those northern poets what we were about. So this is my sound. On the left, the Chafalaya. So black, so burnt inside, silent as a pot. Down here, my lips equal silt and common bliss. Down here, I carry my grave folded in my pocket, a cardboard hunger, a box and shards. The woman beside me in this food line wears a skin tight skirt, has a back door man down south. We have the right to costume and gossip, to cliche and pawn. Down south, we observe the bendable rules that stand in for bone. Below bright star, we have a chicory bias. Low blues and jolie blonde are the national anthems. Down here, I learned acoustics from Professor Longhair, religion from the Mardi Gras gods, persistence in February's saxophone wind. Like buckwheat in the meters, I adjust my heartbeat to the pulse of the tune. Despite the hunter, I am the snake half of the gator. Despite the facts of jazz, I'm as romantic as a bad house band. I still think of salvation every time. Night train, sugar cane, souffle, etouffee. The key to muddy silence is under my tongue. Where your world gapes open, darling, mine shivers in. Covered dish. Lyle's trailer full of banjos and exciters burned down. Gone in a flash. Gone the Stratocaster with the bent tuners. Gone the humbuckers and strings. His cousin Alan couldn't save it, though he tried since it was him who set the fire on accident, burning yard trash. The volunteer fires got there late and stood around a while and watched the melted metal steam. Then shook hands all around and drove their big truck off. Folks gathered up what they could plates and cups and money and still good bed linens, plus the usual double dozen casseroles, and dropped them off to his uncle's place. Lyle ate good for weeks. <laughs> the morning after the fire, even the cat, a stone killer, brought a chipmunk and laid it, still warm, on the rug under Lyle's uncle's microwave. It's a southern custom, the grief covered dish. <laughs> <laughs> Advice, an Arkansas sonnet. By a lake shaped like a cartoon parrot, we practiced the simple heart art. You were 17 and I was 19, then I was 20. This was the first math. It was Arkansas in the 70s and your aunt said, don't grin, honey, you don't want to work your skin like that. She told me, one day you'll be dead, but until then, put on some lipstick. Wear you a cute skirt. This is a poem that I wrote after a, uh, which means it's kind of like a poem by an Arkansas poet, Frank Stanford, who uh, was uh, an early suicide and who wrote The Battlefield Where the Moon Says I Love You. D&D, &D, for those of you who haven't had a spotty past, is drunk and disorderly. Juke, after Frank Stanford. 
If I was sober, I'd lift my head up and look at the mountain, but all I do is beat time on this bar and think about the fat vet. A crow comes down to bring me the usual bad news, as if she was my Carmelite, as if she was barefoot and I was shoes. Then she throws herself into a snowdrift, body in the snow black as Frida Kahlo's eyebrow. I reckon my daughter's dead by the look in her eyes. All the good Merlot's gone, I got passed over for the next best job, and I spent my last five at this bar where they picked me up last week for D&D. &D. As soon as Dolly Parton's done singing, I'm getting out of here. I'm going over to the Union Five and Dime and, put, and lay my good name down on a new red skirt. This is Undressed, an Ozark sonnet. There's no way to turn off the day's lengthening. No way to stop the gnats gathering like dust against the back door or the late gnats stacked around the porch, the lights slanted shine. This is the season that loses night, an outgrown black sleeve showing off a pallid wrist. It arrives stinking of new weeds and frog spawn. You can't resist the bob and blow of its standard weathers, the breeze and shower that decorate their beds with tulip, the sodden soil with daffodil. Erratic as trout, spring days won't lie flat. They glisten and slide, rise up, slap their tails on the plank dock, flip back in, slow to quit the pond's thaw and sloppy ease. Take in a lung full of this season, undress for months on this. So this is Stories Grown Liquid, an Ozark sonnet. Those summer days enter like a noon crowd into the bleachers at Baum Stadium, like a cold beer poured until your paper cup face fills up. They embrace the memory of ice men tonguing the great cold bricks onto oil cloth, cloth, oil cloth kitchens of fans, the perpetual ceiling, the occasional funeral. They sweat it like the brush cut boy playing soccer with his Rottweiler, like the dog walker resisting four terriers. Those days lush up the ever clear with Kool-Aid, the live oak with crows, the vacation road with retread scraps thrown onto the tarmac like scarves. They thickened with stories grown liquid in imagination, cocktails and highballs spiked with a jigger of amber truth, and later dissolved you in a festival of flesh behind an oleander. There you could be naked, your only garment a scrim of sweat. These days, those days, nourish odd thoughts of winter, of women in wreaths of smoky hair, of jazz seeping into me with its nightliness and cool distance. Solid state. The litany of conviction is repetition. You know, you know, you know, you know. Lies arrive later as small irregular shingles carpet the lawn. Hurricanes drag the levees. While a hurricane is happening, it's okay to consider your relief when it's done. The current drives our good goat to his knees. Many traffic lights now have cameras, but there are only 11 sure ways of lying to a duke. Do not break your knee. Healing it will be more difficult than you expect. If you died today, would you spend eternity? The litany of conviction repeats. You know, you know, you know. Solid is a state we might like to attain. Thick is what we must do. The known universe. Any of you who have ever had a class with a poet can recognize, if not these exact words, the affect that goes with these exact words. The dicha is a star. The known universe. He pointed to the page and said, 
Put a sun in here, a star, something to remind your reader of the infinite. Put the infinite here, he said. I didn't think of Polaris or Athecha. I thought war, which went on before and after throughout the known and unknown universe. I'd like to end this with a poem about water, which will be our next great crisis and hopefulness which we might do well to cultivate. Any wet scent. If the river is packing its neon reflection like a salesman packs a suitcase and the sunrise has burned itself to trashy brilliance, if we have eaten up all the wet air around our cars and pushed our trash too far into the ocean, how soon will water Forget the fragile hand of the swimmer moving in and down. How soon will an arid lake forget us as we forget the touch of saturated leaves? If some summers now the hay turns from the sower, comes in slow, if there is only enough time for one cutting before the dust takes the field as it has the tomato garden, how long then will it take the Cadiz Company to pump the Mojave to desiccated bone? How soon will we become dry constellations, lose the feel of damp May rising? And should I care if the stream is headed out of town, if the earth that holds me becomes no more than the dry part of the make-believe I called untrammeled nature? What must I do for water? I have no choice. My memory is a thirsty hound, tracking any wet scent into the dusk, trailing any soggy gleam towards a beach lit up like the Lido. My sly heart, that irrigator and planter, hungers for more and more moisture, and my silkworm mind spins narrow impulse into flood. Then I am a clean tide, a cool breeze to ruffle it, a long distance swimmer, her palm caressing the water, rising, rising again. Thank you. I do what I do. I am a heart and a prison of bone. I am a needle and a ladle. I take my white horse, her hooves assessing each syllable of air. I take my little can of adventure and lift my head up from the wheel of crazy and not enough safety and making the paycheck and stretching the paycheck and hoping to live long enough for the government cheese. I do what I do, don't you? Whatever the dark and the kudzu don't take, I climb. Thank you.